be right in front of us, entryway for coming into our venues, and then concessions, merchandising, along the way, uh, the concourse, restrooms, and ultimately seating, and seating with social distancing in mind to create the safest environment we possibly can. Uh, we're excited to be able to welcome the people that we'll have in here next Saturday. This venue holds around 76,000 uh, people normally for a game day. We'll have about 16,500 next Saturday. And that's by working with the Department of Health on social distancing in the seating bowl. Uh, we've had to reduce capacity. We're down to about 23% and work with all of our season ticket holders first and foremost. We had about 33,000 season tickets sold to the general public and our, our donors and season ticket holders. We had normally about another 3,000 season tickets for administrative uh, obligations such as sponsors, visiting team, vans, recruits, high school coaches, uh, and then usually about 9,000 tickets sold to our students. So you take about 45,000 season tickets in general as the norm for us, and you constrict that all down to 16,500. It's been really a uh, yeoman's work by our ticketing team, our facilities and operations team, and everyone else involved in an effort. Our obligation was to find a way to still have our season ticket holders be able to come to multiple events this year and enjoy cheering on the Razorbacks without ever even having the chance, unfortunately, to being able to go to market on a single game basis or with group tickets um, and, and some package, other packages we would normally have to fill the entire venue. So, But we are excited. We're confident in the plan we've put together so far. Chris is going to talk about that a little bit more. We'll take some additional questions. and uh, But we're going to learn. We're going to continue to evolve. Like, like uh, medicine and science has evolved so far with handling uh, the virus, we're going to learn from our first game to our second game and our third game. And things might change over the course of the entire season across all of our sports here at the University of Arkansas. But it's all in the spirit of providing them the healthiest and safest environment possible for our student athletes, for our staff, for our supporters, and, and everyone who attends. So thank you again for being here and look forward to taking any questions after Chris. Thank you all. Uh, as I think through the fan experience, I start with your entree into the football footprint and the traffic flow. And this year, folks will see a change with the pregame traffic flow. In the past, it used to be one-way traffic on certain streets. This year, due to capacity, we feel like we don't have to change the traffic flow pattern itself. We'll still have a perimeter um, in order to, once you enter the perimeter, uh, be able to navigate appropriately. But just like a men's basketball game, for example, we won't have one-way traffic. So that's the first thing you'll notice. The second thing you'll notice is the parking perimeter or the game day footprint is, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> I can't be good. Um, <coughs> I think it may have been for my protein bar. Um, second thing you'll notice is that the um, parking footprint is a little bit smaller and that is to match the uh, stadium capacity. So instead of using 60 some parking lots on, on game day, uh, we will be using more like 30. The footprint being smaller, we will provide a game day shuttle this year from lot 56 only. Uh, in the past, we've also provided a shuttle from Baum, but that won't be necessary because pretty much everybody that's in the facility will have received a parking pass, and that's been allocated through the foundation within the footprint that we have. As fans begin to come to the stadium, um, obviously we'll have plenty of signage talking about the, the key factors that are gonna be important and that we have to abide by, both through the ADH and through the SEC, and that is everybody will be required to wear a mask. The only exceptions will be for a medical situation. Right now, kids under 10 are not required to wear a mask, but the ADH strongly recommends that they do. Um, obviously, sanitization of the facilities will have already happened, but in addition to that, there we've added plenty of hand sanitizing stations. They'll be available at all the entries and all the places that you would typically think, outside and inside restrooms, near concession stands, near merchandise stands. You'll also notice that we've installed a tremendous amount of plexiglass to separate guests from working personnel. 
Um, but again, everybody will have gone through um, a health screening. All of our workers will have gone through a health screening, um, depending on what the third party vendor is. Some of those are, certainly everybody will do an attestation health form, attesting to the fact that they haven't, uh, they haven't experienced any symptoms or been in contact with somebody that's positive. Uh, and then beyond that, you'll be required to go through a test, uh, a COVID testing procedure, or a temperature screening. So all of us will go through that. On the field itself, the field you'll notice is going to be um, very limited this year to protect the team bubble. Um, so only essential staff, as defined by the SEC, uh, will be on the field this year. Everybody that has any access to the team bench will have gone through at least two testing procedures leading up to the game. Anybody that does not need access to the bench will still go through some screening. You'll also notice per SEC guidelines that we're not permitted to have any in-game activities on the field. So there will be more done visually, probably through the um, video board, et cetera. The band and cheer, you'll notice, will be different because we're not permitted to um, do anything pre-game or halftime with band and cheer on the field. However, they will be very present during the game. The band will be playing from the seats. Uh, the number of people in the band will be somewhat limited uh, because we have to social distance in that area too. Um, and then uh, the cheer squads will also be around the stadium in different positions other than the field. In terms of things to um, recommend to fans, the SEC uh, clear bag policy will still be in effect. So that's an important piece. I would say um, perhaps for the first game, get here a little bit early uh, because there's gonna be a process to get through, but we really feel like we've done a lot of analysis of how many people are entering the gates. Towards that end, we'd like to recommend that people enter the gate that is listed on your ticket because those also have been apportioned. And so to try to equalize the distribution of, uh, among all the gates that we're opening on game day, if everybody goes to the gate listed on their ticket, it should make life a lot easier. Post game, we'd recommend the same thing. Exit the gate that you entered, again, so that we don't have lineups anywhere. The last thing I would say is uh, social distancing on when you leave your car on your way to the stadium. Clearly, we'll have markers here to help separate people, but people have to be cognizant of that themselves, too, to make sure that when you find yourself close to somebody that is outside your family or cohort area, that, you, that we respect everybody and give everybody the space that they need so that we all can stay healthy and continue with the football season. I think we'll open it up to questions at this point. I have one more point also. So we will, we would talk about a number of things over the last five to six months that we've been preparing for. The team, obviously, under Coach Pittman and a new coaching staff, they've been preparing that entire time too. But we're all we're all getting ready. We're all so excited. But again, there's only going to be 16,500 fans in the stands. So we really want to ask our fans to be prepared. Those who have tickets, use your tickets this year more than ever, please. And if you can't come for one reason or another, please give them to a friend because we're going to need all 16,500 uh, in there yelling and screaming. And to Chris's point, we will be adding uh, fan sound effects and cheering, maybe even a little booing and, uh, and some other fun things with our, our video and sound system to try to create as much uh, the game day atmosphere as we can from a sound and audio and visual standpoint as, as possible. But to a certain extent, we have social distancing and the number of fans we'll have in the house. It'll be different, but we're going to do the best job we can to deliver that same experience. We're hoping the fans that have tickets definitely come out or have a friend come in their space. Are the tickets distributed set for the year, or can it be flexible and increased if guidelines uh, allow later in the season? At where we stand right now with the Department of Health, we're in Phase 2. So within Phase 2 standards, tickets are distributed. They're, they're literally in the... Uh, Point right now this week, Tom being distributed as we speak out to everyone. So whether you got five games, the next person got three games, another one got two games, they will all be out. We do have, uh, as per SEC guidelines this year, the number of tickets made available to the visiting teams has uh, constricted down to 500. So if a visiting team is not going to use all of their allocation, 
we'll have a few days before the game that they'll turn those back to us. At that point, we would make those available. We don't anticipate much of that because normally it's a couple thousand tickets made available. So um, basically, we're pretty well set for this year. There are a couple of, um, on a single game basis, a couple suites and or loge boxes. Normally, we operate at a sellout standard. Um, with all those, we've had some fans there opt out just like in the bowl also. So we're going through that process. So right now here today, there are a limited uh, number, a couple of suites and loge boxes available on a game to game basis. Was there a certain number reserved for students so that students could attend the game? Yeah, yeah. Normally 10% uh, of capacity is reserved for students. So back when we were at 73,000, there were 7,300 tickets for students. We're at 16,500. So we've got 1,600 uh, tickets for the students. So those are available for the students. Um, uh, the access passes are still being sold right now. And then the, the claim information is going out to students uh, later this week and into next week. So when you're talking about suites and season ticket holders with families, we can anticipate seeing groups of pockets of 10, 12 people sitting together. So if someone's watching the game, they would understand this pocket of people are season ticket holder families and things like that? Yeah, what the, the Department of Health refers to that is a cohort. So we, we at ticketing, we call it a grouping, grouping or a cohort. Let's say I have six tickets. So I'm going to have myself, my wife, and our couple of kids all sitting together. So if you see six people sitting together, you're going to assume that's one season ticket holder's grouping or, or cohort. The largest grouping we have would be 12. Um, but they go down to one. We have some people who just buy a single uh, season ticket. Um, so, but 12 would be the maximum. Yeah. Are to there follow up on that, Tom, just a little bit, the other uh, way that everyone can help here is all seats are reserved, and that goes with all of our athletic events this year. We've gone through the process of eliminating GA seating, what, and, and what that allows us to do is allow the fans to sit in their assigned seat. So that's gonna be required too. Fans need to sit in their assigned seats because there's been a methodical process through the ticketing office to make sure that we have distanced everybody appropriately. Um, so there's not, we're not gonna be able to scoot around perhaps like we've used to. To, to Chris's point also, um, we have a number of our uh, sports programs that are ticketed, a number are not. So for instance, swimming, is not ticketed. However, when people come to swim meets this year, there will be seats and you'll have to sit in specific seats that have already been socially distanced away from others. So regardless of our home athletic events, there will be social distance seating ticketed or not. So that holds for the student section as well, because for an example, if you watched the Kansas State game last Saturday, it appeared the student section was crammed in together. How, how will it look here? Yeah, we've, we've done allocations. We met with various student groups on campus. So there'll be groupings of uh, foursomes and pairs, and so the students will be informed who has the tickets and to come in your foursomes or pairs, um, and so that's over the course of the entire student section. And those seats, just so you know, we uh, have um, had the ability to install seat bags, so it'll be really obvious for the students which seats are available for their groups of two and four. How do you go about enforcing that, making sure they stay where, where they're supposed to be students and, and general fans? So from an operational point of view, we're going to be as friendly and courteous as we can. I think it starts with the messaging about we're all in this together. And so it's really important for all of us to be able to continue the football season that everybody um, complies with what it is we're required to do uh, to keep the team safe and keep all of us safe. In terms of um, what we're going to do visually, our uh, event staff will be walking around with um, some, some paddles that will remind people, don't forget to wear your mask, don't forget to socially distance. And also, uh, we, they will have a, a manifest where they can tell where people should be sitting. Um, it's, it's fairly simple in terms of an, a view of generally and obviously with the seating bowl going around, it's not this exact same everywhere, but it's basically two seats off the aisle and three seats in between groupings. So that's mostly how it will look. And, and usually about, we, we allocate a row and then you skip two rows and then allocate the next row. Now different sections of the stadium are narrower or pie wedge versus rectangular shape. So sometimes that varies a little bit, but in general, to Chris's point, two seats off the aisle, have a grouping, three seats, then the next grouping, and then you kill two rows and go to the next one. 
So do you guys know for certain Georgia has already claimed all 500 of its visitors' tickets at this point? Uh, I think they'll uh, inform us next week. It's usually the week of the game for their final allocation.